This December I'm making a Christmas calendar using vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. In each one of these days I'm going to procedurally generate a unique Christmassy item because I need icons like these around this time and good free ones are hard to come by. I also want to easily scale and color them in different ways. I hope you'll follow along and implement your own versions so I can showcase them in a special video on the 24th. You'll practice working with coordinates, basic math, and various JavaScript programming techniques. It's a good project, I think, to learn about code modularity, reusability, and how to write consistent code. Today is day 16 and we're gonna draw a present. Coding with Rob. Let's code now. To draw a present here, we're gonna go to index.html and uh, add another one of these drawing functions to our array at the 16th index, draw present. And we'll implement this function in its own file, present.js. When we control click this in VS Code, it's gonna create the file for us here in the items folder. And we can start to write our draw present function with the CTX parameter X and Y for the center, the size, and the hue. Now, two helper variables, top and left, I'm gonna use them to draw the bounding box so that we see where we want our present to fit. So, a rectangle from the top left with size, width, and height. It's a square, really. Now, I want the present to be a box and to stay here at the bottom side. So I already can tell that I'm going to need another helper variable for the bottom so that our code looks nice. And let's begin to define our box properties. So for the height, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap at the top, so maybe a 20% gap. And the width of this is going to be almost covering the whole screen because I want that lid to be at the top and to be a little bit wider than the box. Now some helper variables here, the center of this box in the center and then the bottom and the top. I like to draw these kind of rectangles by just making a very thick line. I think that you have to worry less about parameters and it's easy to do so. But what do you guys think? Is this something silly of a habit that I have? So my helper variables are going to be the bottom and the top. And in the center, I'm going to draw a very thick line, the width I have already. For the top, I need the getter because I'm going to use here this height, which is essentially a parameter for defining the box. And let's give it a dark hue. I'm planning to make the lid lighter in color so that it looks kind of like the light comes from the top and the lid is shading the bottom part of the box. And let's do that line. So we line to from the box X box top to the box X box bottom. And then let's set here the line width to be the box width and also the stroke style to be the box color. Save, refresh, and this is the rectangle drawn as a line. Now let's decorate it a little bit and add a rope here in the middle. And that's more obviously a thin line. And in this case, because we drew that thick rectangle using a thin line, we can also use the same coordinates, the same values to draw a thinner one. We just use this rope width, which is much smaller than the box width. And for the stroke style, let's use a little bit different color to see it appearing there. Nice, but uh, I think I want this color to stand out a bit more. So um, I'm going to do something here and reverse this hue. I'm taking the color essentially opposite in the in the color wheel and we don't have a function for this so in draw.js let's implement it here at the bottom it's essentially just adding 
180 degrees to the hue value. And I think it would work like this, but let's keep it in this 0, 360 range as well. So if we save, refresh, we see now the color is like the opposite of this green. And now it's the opposite of that purple and brown and, and so on. I think that's good. Now let's add this lid here. And it's going to be also a vertical line, a very thick vertical line starting here at the top and going some height there. Back to present JS, let's define some properties for the lid. The height, I'm going to say 20% of the size. Let's just see how this looks like. And then for the width, I'm going to make it be the full size. So it's going to touch that bounding box. X is in the center and the top is the box top. And now the bottom, I'm going to have to add to this top this height. And let's use that light color I've been talking about. And the line drawing happens here with the lid X, lid top, lid X, lid bottom. And the properties line width is the lid width and the stroke color is the lid color. Save, refresh, and this is the lid. And what would look really nice is to add one of these bows here at the top. Let's see how we might do that. Draw a bow, CTX X at the box top. And let's say the size, 80% of the size, because I don't want it to fill everything. And I'm going to use also this reverse hue that we created previously so that it matches that rope color. Save and refresh. I don't like it that it's blocking the lid. Let's see what happens if we draw this uh, before the lid. Yeah, much nicer. And uh, now you can get the feeling of progressing much faster when drawing these compound shapes. It shows how making good modules can make development much faster in the later stages. Let's remove this bounding box. 